Hi, welcome to NCS TV. I'm Taylor Seal. I'm a third grade science teacher at Sally Umble Elementary, and today we'll be talking about forces and motion. So my first question for you is, what is motion? Have you think you've ever been in motion? Because I can tell you right now, you absolutely have. We are in motion all the time. So motion is the process of moving. We're constantly moving, right? But what causes an object to move? Have you just been playing outside before and all of a sudden just a ball rolls past you and you look around and there's no one there? No, that's not how it works because there has to be a force, like a push or a pull, in order to cause something to move. Today we are going to be looking at and describing different types of motion. We have six different objects on my table right here and we're going to be looking at some three, like three different questions about these objects. So, as we are observing them, I want you to think about these three questions. The first question is, how is this object moving? Which way is it moving? The second question is, is this object moving fast or is it moving slow? The third question is, are any of these objects on this table stopped? So let's get to looking at our objects. Our first object is a pendulum. A pendulum is a, a string on a fixed point. So here we have a ruler, I made this at home, with a string and a washer. So I'm going to pull back my washer, not very far, but as you watch, I want you to see if you can describe the type of motion that my pendulum is making. Is it going around in a circle? Is it going up and down? I want you to tell me. Are you ready? Let's go. Hmm. Let's look at that motion. Let's look one more time. Hmm. Does it look like it's going in a circle? No, it is going back and forth. Good job. So if we keep watching our pendulum, eventually, what do you think will happen? You think it's going to get faster? It's going to get slower? No, you're right. It's going to stop. So we just described the motion of a pendulum. The string and the washer swing back and forth. Was there any part of my pendulum that was not moving at all? Good job. It was my ruler. It wasn't moving a bit. My second object is a ping pong ball. I'm sure you've seen these before. What do you think might happen when I drop this ping pong ball? Do you think the motion will go around in a circle? Do you think it'll swing back and forth? Maybe a zigzag line? Let's watch and see. Oh, it bounced up and down. Very good. If you notice, it accidentally hit my pendulum, and that would be another force acting on my ping pong ball, which caused it to stop. If you were to kick a soccer ball, it could keep rolling in the grass, but eventually, even if nothing touched it, it would slow down and stop. My third object is a toy car. And so we all know we've been driving in cars before, right? So if I pull my car back, Watch the motion of my car. Ooh. Watch it one more time. Is it going in a zigzag line? No, you're right. It's going in a straight line. And what happened to my car at the end? It was starting to go kind of fast in the beginning, but eventually it stopped. Very good. Now I have a toy top right here. You might not have ever played with one of these before, but they're really fun. If I spin my toy top, it'll keep going and going and going. So what, how would you describe this motion of this toy top? I think it's a zigzag, a straight line. No, it spins around in a circle. And eventually, just like all of our other objects so far, it is going to stop. That's amazing, right? My next object is a ramp. And you might have seen a ramp before. Sometimes we drive up ramps, sometimes we drive down ramps. But right here I have a ramp made out of a simple clipboard and some blocks. Okay, and I'm going to put my block at the top of my clipboard. And when I let it go, I want you to watch the motion. Are you ready? Ooh, watch one more time. How would you describe that motion? Well, did it go back and forth? Did it go around in a circle? Nope, it went just in a straight line, just like our car did. And when our block reached the bottom, it also stopped. Very good. Now, guys, this is my favorite one. I made this out of popsicle sticks. This is actually a catapult, and I glued a cap onto the end. And so this is the most interesting one, I think. So I'm going to hold my catapult down. I'm going to pull back with my finger. So that's the motion right there. I'm pulling it back. 
and I'm going to let my Hershey kiss go. What do you think the motion of my Hershey kiss? Do you think it's going to go straight up and come back down? You think it's going to go zigzag all around the room? Let's see. Well, if you just saw it fly by, that was my Hershey kiss going in a straight line all the way down to the floor, and that is where it stopped. So guys, we've been talking about which way it was going, how fast or slow it was going, and some things that didn't move, like our ramp didn't move, um, the ruler didn't move, but we've actually been describing some really scientific words like direction, speed, and rest. So direction is which way an object is going, okay, how it's moving. Speed is how fast or slow it's moving, and rest is when something is stopped. So guys, this whole idea of motion was discovered by this guy named Sir Isaac Newton in 1666, which was 354 years ago. He was only 23, old, 23 years old when he discovered this, and I think that's crazy. He was a famous scientist and mathematician, and we give him credit for finding out the laws of motion and gravity. And the rumor is he found gravity after an apple fell from a tree and hit him in the head. So I have a book, it's called Newton and Me. I just told you Newton was a real live guy, but in this book, he's actually a dog, okay? And so as I read this book, I want you to listen for some dis ways that we described motion. Some things are gonna happen in here of, of how, of certain motions that are happening, and I want you to listen really close. Are you ready? Newton and Me is also by Lynn Mayer. So here's our first page of Newton and Me. It says, Saturday morning I was asleep in my bed when Newton, my dog, dropped a ball on my head. Hmm, do you hear any, any force, any motion that's happening? Yeah, that's right. His dog dropped a ball on his head, just like we dropped our ball in our demonstration. I pulled on my blue jeans, t-shirt, and shoes, I, and ate a quick breakfast while Dad read the news. So he pulls on his blue jeans. Remember, a force is a push or a pull. It says, then Newton and I ran out the back door. They're running, right? Motion. And we had the whole day to play and explore. I rolled Newton's ball to him along the ground. As we played with the ball, here's what we found. The ball won't roll far in the rough, grassy yard. It rolls much farther on a surface that's smooth and hard. And guys, we'll talk about that in just a minute. If you saw when we did our ramp, our block actually slowed down, and that's because of something called friction. So we'll get to that in just a second. It said, but it won't roll at all if I don't give it a push. When I push too hard, it rolled as far as the bush. Remember, forces are what make things move. So it says, I decided to throw the ball up in the sky. I threw the ball hard. It went really high. No matter how hard I would throw the ball up, it would always come down to me and my pup. Hmm. Remember I said that apple falling and hitting Sir Isaac Newton in the head? Maybe that's why the ball comes down and, hit and lands in their hands again. This gave me an idea I wanted to test. I took out the red truck that I liked the best. I put down the truck on, I put the truck on ground that was flat until I would push my truck stayed where it sat. Hmm, so without that push or pull force, that truck sat still. So guys, a couple things that we heard about in this book and I mentioned as we were reading, so gravity is this force that pulls things back to the center of the earth. If you've ever seen a video of an astronaut, they are floating freely in space. If we were in space right now, this ball would just fly past me. But on the earth, we have a force called gravity that pulls everything to the center. That's why if I pick up this block, it gets pulled right back down. So you also heard about this force called friction, which it says right here, it slows or stops something from moving. And if you think back to what we read, it said the grass made the ball roll slower than the concrete. Last we have how fast or slow something moves depends on how hard we push or we pull it. Remember, he had that red truck and he was just kind of waiting for it to move and it didn't move until he would have pushed it. Very good. And it also said the harder he threw, the higher the ball 
went into the air. So what you might not have known is what we just talked about are actually these laws of motion that Sir Isaac Newton made. So the first one says any object in motion will continue to move in the same direction with the same speed unless forces act on it. And I know that sounds super crazy, but if you were to kick a soccer ball outside in a wide open area, it would continue to go and go and go and go until another force acted on it. That sounds nuts to us because every time we kick a ball, it always stops, right? Well, that's because on Earth, we have the forces of gravity and friction. Gravity is pulling the ball back to the ground and friction is creating air resistance that eventually slows the ball down. Number two says the greater the mass of an object, the more force it will take to accelerate the object. So guys, if you had a ping pong ball and a bowling ball and you were to kick both, you would have to kick the bowling ball much harder than you would have to kick the ping pong ball to accelerate it or speed it up. Number three says for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And I know this one sounds really hard, but I think a really good example of this one is if you take your hand and push down on a table, okay, so I'm pushing on a table, you might not can see it, but I'm pushing on a table and I'm pushing down really, really hard, but the table is also pushing back. That's why it doesn't collapse as I'm pushing my hand down. So guys, you might not know this, but there are forces in motion all around you. So can you think of some places that you have seen those forces in motion before? So I gave you some examples right here. What about a playground? When you swing with your friends on the swings and you push them, or you're playing soccer in the field, what about waves at the beach? Some of you might have never been to the beach, but a wave, it has a pattern. It goes up and it falls. It goes up and it falls. A roller coaster is a really good example of forces in motion. It propels the roller coaster forward and it gets to do all these cool tricks. What about tennis? Tennis, you're constantly hitting a ball with a racket, so you are giving force to the ball and then the other person returns it doing a cartwheel. Do you remember when I said I was pushing down on the table really hard? When you do a cartwheel, you're putting force on the earth and the earth is putting force back on you. That's why you don't just crumple down into it. And lastly, throwing a ball for your dog. Guys, the harder you throw the ball, the farther it will go. I really enjoyed our time here together at MCSTV. I hope you come back to tune in again. Thanks. Bye.